Hello there folks, CPG here. So now that we've finished commentating and uploading footage and doing runs and doing all the number crunching for uh, uh, Knuckles' is five stages, I thought it was a good time to maybe ch sort of check in on some preliminary results when we look at just Knuckles' stages. Um, you know, just to actually bring things back to statistics for even just a moment. Uh, I figured you guys would be interested, especially since it would allow us to sort of compare and contrast to Knuckles and Rouge separately to see if there's any uh, interesting differences. So yeah, so we're going to start things off by just quickly uh, going through the individual data for each of the five stages, just so you guys don't have to dig through. Uh, the individual videos to find them, so here they all are in order of stage. Right, so with all that data on the table, what we're essentially trying to do here, and I will set, I will explain the statistical the, the statistical tests and methods that we're using in more detail when we get to the final analysis. Uh, for now, I just want to kind of give you guys the numbers and sort of run through what they mean. And uh, yeah, so for Knuckles' stages overall, so we have a newbie mean in standard deviation, a Knuckles full hint mean in standard deviation, and a Knuckles trial mean in standard deviation. And I use those titles to sort of a uh, distinguish from the individual cases that come up within the given stages. So uh, we call it Knuckles trial mean, for example, because we don't want to confuse that with our individual trial means for each of the stages. So yeah, that's what we were doing with that. Um, so yeah, as you can see, our newbie mean, so when we add up all of our, our newbie mean and standard deviation, when we add up all of our newbie run scores for each of the five stages and average them out and uh, find the square root of the variance for it, for the overall distribution. Uh, on average, it will take you approx- I estimate anyway, based on the methods that I've been using, which are flawed, let's not forget. Uh, I estimate that on average, if you're a new player not using hints and you get the worst possible RNG you can, it will take you, on average, 14 minutes and 26 seconds to complete each of Knuckles' five stages. Plus or minus 5 minutes and 25 seconds, depending on the stage. So, uh, you would add 5 minutes and 25 seconds to the average for a stage like Death Chamber or Meteor Herd, and you would subtract 5 minutes and 25 seconds from the average to get times for uh, something like Wild Canyon. And then, you know, Pumpkin Hill would obviously be somewhere in between all of that. So. Yeah, so you know, so it's kind of the same deal for our full hint mean and our standard deviation. So we add up all of our full hint run scores and average them out and find the square root of the variance. And so I estimate that if on a worst case scenario run using three hints per shard, it should take you approximately six minutes and 55 seconds to beat these stages, plus or minus two minutes and 59 seconds, depending on the stage. Um, so what that would mean is for a stage like, uh, say, Meteor Herd, it would take you more like nine minutes to beat these, yes, actually more, little less than 10 minutes to beat a stage like uh, Meteor Herd, if it's a worst case scenario and you're using three hints per shard, and for something like Wild Canyon, it would take you more like four minutes. Um, so kind of same deal with our trial means. That's so these. This represents my uh, me leveraging my experience and knowledge of this playstyle to get the best times I possibly could. Uh, so my overall mean for my performance in Knuckles' stages is two minutes and 55, 57 seconds, plus or minus one minute and 19 seconds. So for a stage like uh, Death Chamber, it would take me more like uh, four minutes and 19 seconds. For a stage like Wild Canyon, on average, it would take me more like uh, a minute and 30-ish. Like, you guys can do the, the math on that. So that's what our three distributions look like uh, for Knuckles' stages. So moving on now, we're going to look at our statistical, our results when we do our st statistical significance testing. Uh, so here we go. Uh, so full hint minus newbie run. So that that's an that's a mean as well. So basically, we're 
on uh, each of the slides I posted for the individual stages, there was a full hint minus newbie score. Uh, so I added all of those up and averaged them out and found the mean and standard deviation from that. So on average, I estimate you can save seven minutes and 30 seconds in, e in these five knuckle stages uh, if you use three hints per shard in the worst case scenario. And I, the standard deviation, so it's a little different because the number itself is negative, but uh, for a stage like Wild Canyon, it would save you more like uh, four minutes and 15 seconds, 40, 45 seconds, four minutes and 45 seconds. And for a stage like Death Chamber, it would save you more like nine, more like 10 minutes and 15 seconds. I might be doing my math wrong there. Uh, we'll get to those numbers on the far right in just a moment, but I want to go through these simpler numbers that you guys probably get first. All right, so our Knuckles trial mean minus our newbie mean. So when we add up all the scores for the trial mean minus newbie mean, or try run minus newbie run across the five stages we get, on average you can save, I estimate anyway, that you can save 11 minutes and 29 seconds uh, simply from knowing the stage and using hints properly as an experienced player and doing what you're supposed to be doing as an experienced player. And uh, for a stage like uh, Wild Canyon, you could say you would save more like seven minutes and 17 seconds. For a stage like Meteor Herd or Death Chamber, you'd save more like 15 minutes and 42 seconds. Yeah, I think that's right. All right, so when we add it, so for the next row, uh, trial mean minus full hint mean. So our trial mean is, you know, we add a, so this is something that I actually didn't include on the slides, but I ran through those calculations separately in my spreadsheet anyway, uh, and did the same sort of averaging thing where I found out on average. Uh, so basically what we're doing is we're comparing the trial distribution to the full hint distribution to see basically how much extra time you save from being an experienced player and you know it's it's basically that 11 minute score uh, it's basically the difference between that 7 minute 30 second score and that 11 minute 29 second score uh, so I I estimate that on average experienced players save an additional 3 minutes and 58 seconds uh, compared to an ex inexperienced player using hints and uh, depending on the stage they will they could save up to four minutes up to five minutes and 48 seconds and uh, the lowest they could save is about two minutes and eight seconds uh, in comparison so yeah those are those are the numbers and as you can see the the general patterns that uh, I sort of laid out in my hypotheses at the beginning of the study do seem to be bearing out so far just by you know eyeballing the data uh, but just to be sure I have also conducted significance testing and this is kind of a complicated topic and I recommend that if you want more information about it uh, for now I'll be explaining this in more depth in the final results uh, but if you want more information about that I recommend looking up classic hypothesis testing on the internet and you should get a good slew of information about how hypothesis testing works statistically. Uh, essentially, what we're trying to do is we're trying to, we're basically, so that top row represents our newbie distribution. Uh, surely you guys have heard of the normal distribution or the bell curve. Uh, statistics loves those things. And so basically, uh, these, our newbie distribution and our full hint distribution uh, sort of represent the range of values across the five stages that um, it can be and the standard deviation sort of lays out how far apart those scores generally are to, so that this is basically the dimensions of our bell curve and um, so essentially what we're doing with the hypothesis testing is we are running a t test independent samples t test uh, I ran some F tests for variance and I found that indeed these three distributions have unequal variance. So I ran the d independent samples t test for unequal variance, and uh, these are the scores I found. So for RQ1, we're comparing the full hit distribution to the newbie distribution to see if they are statistically significantly different. And our t score is 2.711 
which comes out to a p-value, so that's that's the significance value of 0 0.03507. And I went to four significant figures because the input data was five significant figures. But, I don't know, I probably screwed up there. You, I probably didn't need to give you guys four, five digits, but, you know, it was just made the most sense to me. Uh, so, what that means is that so usually the cutoff score for classic hypothesis testing is uh, essentially we're testing to see if the two distribution, the two sample distributions we're comparing are 95, at least 95% different, um, or actually greater than 95% different. Um, so what the p-value represents is the percentage out of one, 100. So that, so multiply that number by 100, and you'd get like. Uh, 3.507 percent essentially um, and that's that's the percentage of similarity between the two distributions so what that means is that our two district our new full hint newbie distributions are 3.5 percent similar which means that there are about 97 percent different which means that they are statistically significantly different so if as long as the p-value is below 0.05 that means that the results are significant and that the distributions are significantly different. So our D right there is actually our effect size. So the p-value rep represents statistical significance, the d-value represents uh, practical significance. And the reason we need that is because of the way I sort of framed my third hypothesis. So what that basically means is that's, that's sort of creating a distribution of differences between means and sort of figuring out uh, compared to the T distribution and, and stuff. And it's it's basically finding that 1.71. Uh, so, generally, I think how it works for Cohen's D, which is the effect size statistic we are using, is uh, 1. Point, so, usually a 0.25 effect size is a weak one, a 0.5 is a medium effect size, and a 0.75 and above is a large effect size. So what this is basically telling us, and this is partially due to the uh, small sample size, but it's actually equal, relatively similar to our uh, overall one that uses a bigger sample size. So I don't, I'm not sure how much that's affecting it. Uh, our effect size is 1.71, which indicates a gigantic uh, effect size. So using hints is is will statistically significantly reduce the amount of time you spend in Knuckles' stages, is essentially what those numbers mean. And it's practically significant as well. Um, so, basically our, that RQ2 box is the same stuff, only this time we're comparing the trial distribution to the newbie distribution. And our t-value is 4.601, and our p-value is 0.01002. Now, um, so that indicates that these these distributions are are only about one percent similar, and they are 99 percent different. So that's actually really close to passing the threshold for highly significant, which is like the gold standard in like the actually more like the platinum standard in social sciences. If you can get a p-value of of that's lower than 0.01 then that means that you've, you've found something really strong and well supported by the data. Um, but it, it almost gets there, but not quite, but I have a feeling that that's due to the small sample size and the lack of statistical power. So, yeah. Our d-value, our effect size is 2.91, which is a huge effect size. Um, so, and, you know, obviously we're comparing like the worst case scenario for not using hints as an inexperienced player to the best case scenario of a player, of an experienced player using their knowledge of the stage. So, you, you know, that's that's kind of to be expected that we'd see such a huge difference in terms of the stats. But, you know, still, um, this would suggest that experience makes a huge difference for these stages. Uh, but, yeah. So our final sort of comparison is we're comparing our trial distribution to our full hint distribution. So the full hint uh, represents how fast an inexperienced player can finish these stages with three hints per collectible uh, in a worst case scenario. And then the trial mean is obviously me doing my best and using my knowledge. So uh, when we compare those two distributions, 
Um, we get a T-score of 2.716, and we get a P-value of 0.03481, which is uh, statistically significant, and we get an effect size of 1.72. So it's actually slightly, so the difference between the full hint and trial distribution is actually slightly more, almost equal to the amount of influence that hints have on their own. So what this would suggest for Knuckles' stages is that is that the amount of time that you can reduce is essentially doubled for someone who is experienced uh, compared to someone who is, uh, I don't know, it doesn't really bear out the data, but I'm point is that's a pretty big effect size so that would that means that uh, I don't know I guess to move back to the hypotheses I, I stipulated at the beginning of this project uh, the first hypothesis I had like we can safely reject the null for all three of these the null hypothesis in case you're not familiar is just the the hypothesis that um, your your manipulation your independent variable will have no effect and your dependent variable. So our independent variable is using three hints for shard and uh, uh, you leveraging your experience essentially. And our dependent variable is how fast you can complete the stages. And so what these results suggest altogether is that our independent variables do indeed, with at least 95% certainty, uh, influence how fast you can complete these stages. So that, that's what these statistical results indicate. Uh, but in terms of my research hypotheses, if we reject the null, then that means that your research hypothesis is much more likely to be the case. But, you know, certainly one study may not be enough to verify that for certain. So I'd say that my first hypothesis that using three hints per shard would significantly reduce the amount of time spent in stages is supported by the data. My second hypothesis that an experienced player using their experience would be able to finish stages significantly faster is supported by this data and um, my third hypothesis that um, I did expect that it would be significant but I expected that it would be an overall small effect size essentially and that's not what we found here so my third hypothesis was actually incorrect it's, it seems that experience has a, has a pretty significant stacking value on top of how much you can lower stage completion times uh, simply based on using three hints per shard as an inexperienced player. Which makes sense. Uh, I don't think these results should be too surprising for Knuckles anyway. But yeah, that's our statistical results for Knuckles' stage for now. Um, just to give you an idea of how we're analyzing this data if we were doing the dream research design with like the 300 volunteers and everything we'd use essentially the same statistical analysis and uh, Because of the bigger sample size it would the uh, effect size would probably be smaller than that is my guess But you'd uh, my guess is that we'd see the same sort of patterns but I know, obviously, unless if I actually do the dream research design, I can't say that for certain, but that would be my expectation. And uh, certainly if you have the time, money, resources, and training to conduct the dream research design, uh, I compel you to do so, because I'd be interested in what you find. But I don't know, even doing this much with what I know was a huge undertaking. So, yeah. So yeah, that's our results for Knuckles of Stages. I uh, hope that these were interesting and that I didn't bore you to tears. Um, feel free to look up more about statistics and stuff if you want, if you'd want to know more about my analysis. Um, and I will see you guys on Friday uh, when we begin Rouge's Stages with the Dry Lagoon. And I, so I, until then, I'm XO and I'll see you guys then.